Sinek. I'm the managing director and owner of OSAC, Asian Wine Service and Education Center. We're considered to be the longest established wine center in Hong Kong. We've been here for 17 years already and uh, never thought that we'd be here. You know, we've, uh, we are based in Hong Kong and we have got offices around Asia. Oh, it started as a passion, as a, uh, as a hobby. And uh, actually, it was my husband who influenced me. It was him who I've been following everywhere as we as we give lectures on cruise ships, as we travel around the world. And I've listened to him talk about wine, and I thought, oh, that's very interesting. So we thought we better make this hobby uh, something more fruitful. And I decided to take the course myself. And I didn't realize that there was so much to learn about wine than just drinking it. So and so we decided, okay, let's um. You know, let's, let's, let's run some courses, let's share our knowledge and our passion for wine with other people. We started small, just um, you know, to the trade. You know, in Hong Kong we had such high taxes. It was really, wine was um, limited to the elite. They like to drink wine. Those people who can afford it will drink wine. And so we started off with groups of interested people. Then people from the trade start coming in. and. And it just so happened, it's just word of mouth, and everybody said, you want to learn about wine, go to Steve and Jenny. And so that's how it all began. And we decided to do other courses as well, like qualification courses, like from the WSET, the Wine and Spirit Education Trust. Uh, they approached us and asked us if we would be interested in running their qualification courses. We were initially working from home. Then we started with a small office, because people always say, how can I learn about wine if I don't even know where to go? So we decided to have an office address, and we had like a little cubicle, just for people to come in and inquire about courses and, and do their registration. And so, and then that's again spreading the word. And we said, okay, this is, you know, we're, we're, it's going too big. So we found another place, which was quite small, two small classrooms. Um, and very soon after that, <laughs> those two classrooms were tight, you know, it was too small for all the people coming in. And it's funny, you could see people that this close to each other and Although, you know, it was it was crowded, people still found it very intimate, very cozy, you know, and things. But anyway, then, then our lease was up for that, and we found this place, and now we've got three classrooms that we can run three different you know, classes every night, every day, every night, including weekends, and we have our own team of tutors as well. First of all, Wine Future is um, organized by Pancho Campo, the first master of wine in Spain. Um, he did the first edition of Wine Future in Rioja, Spain, two years ago. Uh, it was well attended by the big personalities, Robert Parker, Justice Robinson, Kevin Zerali, uh, Steven Spurrier, all of these people were there. And it was proven a success. Uh, there were about 550 attendees from mostly the Western countries, not a lot of people from Asia. It was considered a very important summit. It was, um, they were discussing all the issues um, confronting the business of wine. And, um, and so Robert Parker, he said, you know, the future of wine is in Asia. And he suggested to Pancho, why don't you hold the next wine future in Hong Kong? That's why we are doing it here. Since Pancho Campo, and he's the president of the Academy of Spain, the Wine Academy of Spain, we are partners with the Wine Academy of Spain because we run Spanish wine courses for them. So we, we know how we, how we all work with each other. So he said, Jenny, would you be interested to run Wine Future and help us organize Wine Future in Hong Kong? And I said, yeah, sure, why not? You know? Well, it is a big event. <laughs> it is so big. Um, it's like, this is a full-time job, really, and I had to hire more people. We have to hire a sales team, get a PR agency, and we have more and more important people coming in. First of all, Robert Parker, of course, is coming. Justice Robinson, uh, Steven Spurrier, Kevin Zrali, um, all the big wine personalities. And just recently, Francis Ford Coppola, the, wine, the uh, producer, the film producer of Godfather, he decided to come as well. So it's become bigger and uh, very important. Wine Future is, is, an, is a summit. It's a summit of wine. So you may think about the G8 summit, you know, all these world leaders talk about the issues confronting the world, uh, you know, uh, everything in the world. Uh, well, this is the issues confronting wine. 
the, the industry, the wine industry. And so uh, we were able to organize all these wine personalities from other countries to come to Hong Kong to give a chance for people in Asia, wine professionals in Asia, to interact with them and discuss the issues like consumption, uh, communication with the consumers, um, you know, how do you how do you sell sweet wines? You know, we know that Asian people in general they don't like sweet wines. So what's the challenge there? So these are the things that's going to be uh, discussed during the summit, and not just this discussion of issues, but you know, it's, it's very interactive. Definitely very interactive. Um, people from and the wine professionals all over the world will get to ask all these experts what what their views, their opinions, and then bring that back to their work and actually apply it. Um, social media will also be discussed, marketing, you know, um, you know, all these issues will be discussed. Aside from these panels, which is very, very important, we have three grand tastings. Two years ago, we had, in the first edition of My Future, uh, Robert Parker did a grand tasting of Grenache, you know, the great variety of Grenache. And this time, he is going to be doing a grand tasting of 20 Bordeaux wines. And this Bordeaux wines are not the Lafitte, the Latour Margot. He wants to tell the world what's after this. What's after Lafitte? What's after Margot? What's after Latour? You know, Mouton. You know, there's more to Bordeaux than these. You know, so he is. Um, he's going to be reviewing uh, the twenty. He, he's going to be tasting twenty wines, twenty Bordeaux wines. And I bet you, after this tasting, the news all over the world say, "Wow, this wine is you know tasted at Wine Future," and people start buy cases of it. You know, so that, that is going to have a real influence and impact on the consumption of Bordeaux wines after that. So, and not only would Robert Parker be tasting these 20 wines uh, alone, and it's going to be shared by 1,100 tasters. So you can imagine how many glasses there are, 20 glasses per taster, 1,100, you know, and this is a great opportunity for wine professionals to be there to share the experience. And added bonus, not only Robert Parker, there will be the 20 chateau owners will be sitting side by side with him. So when the tasters, you know, the wine professionals who are sitting in the audience, they could ask questions about the wine, about the, the chateau, about their terroir, about their winemaking, vinification, things like that. So that is a great, great opportunity it's a great experience imagine Robert Parker flying all the way from the States to fly here to be with us so it's definitely an opportunity not to be missed Jancis Robinson is the other uh, grand tasting she she wants to feature great varieties that are not well known and you know things for us to discover so you know something she called it a taste of the wild side so uh, up and coming wine regions up and coming great varieties and stuff like that so something also very interesting and of course Spanish wines you know Spanish wines is becoming in a very popular wine, a popular region as well. So Pancho Campo being the first master of wine of Spain, he would be also featuring you know, Spanish wines there. And it, it's going to be great in three days in November. I know it's right after the wine fair, but look, if you're visiting from Hong Kong, uh, from other countries to Hong Kong, you might as, well, you might as well stay a few days and meet all these big guys. It's a great experience for, for every wine professional in, in Asia and in the world. Right, the next wine is from Gigondas, also from the Rhone Valley. So this is going to be a little bit warmer climate, so let's, let's try this. You can already see the color is slightly different. Just one year older, yeah, it's 2008. So you can see the color is slightly, this is more, a little bit more purpley, and this one's a bit more ruby, turning more amber like in the garden. Like, so very interesting. So it's showing its age, but still in good condition. Mm. Not as fruit forward as this. This is this is for like everyday drinking wine. This one is for something that you have to dwell into. Okay. Very savory, uh, spicy. Sometimes they call that a little bit leathery as well. And sometimes in my class, sometimes we say it smells like animal. <laughs> you know, animal fur when you have that pet, you know, a little bit of, just a little bit of it. 
but still aromatic. But this is more aromatic, and if people are starting to learn about wines, the first wine will be great. This one, they'll say they won't appreciate it as much, you know. So, still, you still get that black fruit char characteristics. This one, uh, this one's mostly Grenache, so you know you've got more berry fruits too. All right, so I'm going to try now. Less fruit forward, more spice. Um, I forgot to mention about tannins. Red wines have tannins, and tannins makes your mouth dry. You know, when you have red wines, especially you know when it's very high in tannins, so you can feel that your mouth is a bit rough and dry. So that then you feel the tannins in this one's a bit higher. Tannins is what gives red wine structure, and you know wines with high tannins will allow the wines to you know, age a bit longer. That's why uh, Bordeaux wines, because their main grape variety is Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon is very high in tannins. You can keep Bordeaux wines for a very long time. The tannins on this one, it's much higher. So I can imagine that this wine, you can keep this for a longer period of time than the first one. So that's how you learn the difference between the, the two wines. Okay, so should we try next one? Okay, so this one is from Spain. And the great variety is Monastero. Also, you know, more purpley color. You know, so. so again, very useful. And this one is 2010. You know, so you, you know, you could actually see just by the color. You, of course, you can't look at the wines. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 2009. No question about that. You can't do that. You know, because different grape varieties have different, you know, uh, aging process and you know, how long it ages. Just like people, <laughs> people can look, you know, uh, in their 50s, but they look like 30. You know, what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, like you. <laughs> so, um, so the color. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. So a lot more spices. Very spicy in here. Also quite meaty and savory, you know. Interesting. And sometimes, you know, um, when a wine, when a wine is not coming to you, you need to let it breathe a little bit more. Sometimes you really have to aerate it a little bit more. That's why we do decanting. So, I'm just aerating it just to let out some. Now you see that's better now. <laughs> it's still very very peppery spice things. All right. in acidity. High in acidity, uh, well it's very good, it's good in us because we, if you can have that with um, sour foods um, because you know sour foods goes well with wine that has high in acidity. So um, good with some meat as well. You know. And it, this is Spanish and all Spanish tapas they like using tomatoes a lot so it goes very well with Spanish food so that, that's very interesting, very nice too. Tannin levels is okay, but I think yeah, I think it also has quite good aging potential too. And this one is from Torres, also from Spain, and the great variety is Tempranillo. Oh, look at that color! Wow, you see, it's two thousand and six, and you can see that the color is a little bit different now. So it's a little bit more brown in color, more garnet, you know, amber garnet kind of color. So it's showing its age, two thousand and six. Yes, yeah, so this is Tempranillo. Ooh, smells more like, you know, cloves, cinnamon, more of spices, less of the fruit. As a wine becomes older, you get more of that nutty characteristics, you know, that spicy characteristics, leather characteristics as well. So, it's nice, it's still very nice, They're totally different. Um, Characters, the different expression. It's amazing, and that's what's the great, great thing about tasting wine. You learn so much about it. You know, not just through tasting it. Anyway. <laughs> As a wine ages, the tannin, the tannins soften, so the tannins here become a bit more softer. Oh, it's got more dry fruit characteristics, more prunes, raisins, lots of cloves and cinnamon. 
and yes, and also when you taste wine, there's always this after, after like you know, this the finish, the aftertaste, the length of it. So, the the the, the longer the flavors linger in your mouth, you can say it's a longer finish. You know? So, I get more of that spicy finish, and um, it's also it's also wonderful. You know? So, these are the uh, the wines for today from France and from Spain. Bye.